for our calling, the, the calling is always up higher. We don't just call aimlessly. There's a place from which we call and to which we call. And so uh, I know that the brethren have already had their minds <clears throat> primed and, and ready. But this is, a, this is an onward, upward trek that we're on. So we're going to continue to call up higher. In Galatians chapters 4 and 5, we have this uh, written of the Apostle Paul. It says, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, <clears throat> the one by a bondmaid, <coughs> the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. This is for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Now this, this uh, right here, Paul had been writing to these brethren. He said he was afraid of them, how that they had fallen, for they were falling from grace. And how is it that a person can be doing what a lot of people would call works of righteousness, howbeit the righteousness of the law, and yet be fallen from grace. It's because their trust had been transferred from Christ alone as a means of righteousness to something that they were doing. This is such a point of contention with people. I almost can't believe it. Once, once you get to where you see it, it seems absurd that, that it wasn't evident to you all along. Uh, it, it seems like every time somebody mentions faith or they mention works, there ensues this big discussion about what we're not saying and what we mean. And it's not by this and it is by... You know, at some point, you just kind of think, duh. It's, it should be obvious that there is no flesh justified by any works done by ourselves, whether they be religious works or whether they be just what people would call good deeds. Nobody's going to be good enough to go to heaven. God's not going to look at anybody and say, you know, you were a pretty good person. And... Um, I, I know you didn't really know my son, but I just like you a lot. Come on in. See, God's not a respecter of persons. Amen. He respects the person of his son Amen. and those in him. So it's a very subtle device of the devil, and it can creep in whenever it's, it's not expected. The people of God are zealous of good works, zealous of them. We, we look for opportunities to do every good that God opens up to us. But none of the works are good unless they're wrought in faith of Christ Jesus. That is the root definition of any good thing. So when it says we hope here that we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Then from the beginning to the end, see, even this is not a good work unless it is through the Spirit by faith. It is the same faith in, not just faith, this nebulous faith. Faith specifically in Christ Jesus as the Savior. Whatever he saves is saved. Whatever he doesn't save is not saved. It's pretty simple, really. And so, as we meet together, we enjoy this, this liberty that, uh, uh, again, is, is spoken of, this liberty uh, wherewith Christ has made us free, not to be in bondage again, entangled with things, 
And for us to be discerning and every person <coughs> examine in themselves whether their works are wrought in faith. Mm -hmm. The point of our gathering together is to build one another up in our most holy faith mm -hmm. and to serve God through faith. All of our works, our works of listening, our works of speaking, our works of uh, applying our minds to and reasoning on the word of God, uh, whatever it is, it's wrought in faith. And then it rises, uh, a sweet-smelling savor, if you would, to the Lord. Anything else is a bad odor. So we want the Lord to be able to, as it were, smell in our assembly and for it to be pleasing to him, that the fragrance of Christ in our assembly, and then that fragrance continuing to linger on us because we were in faith when we came. We came in order to, to, to enrich that faith by further understanding, by firmer grasp on what it is that is to be believed, what God has said, and that that, that same aroma would be stronger upon us than it was before we came. Amen. Now in 2 Thessalonians 3, verses 3 and 5, it's written, But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and to the patient waiting for Christ. So as we, as we uh, meet together, as we grow together, as we wait together, these things are all calls to come up higher. Because the day will come when the trump will sound and he shall gather us unto himself and we shall have bodies like unto his glorious body mm -hmm. so that all the things that are being developed in us now will be fully at home in those bodies. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we will be forever with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister Roxanne is going to come up and... Uh, lead us in singing and we'll go ahead and open up our our gathering with a word of prayer